still on the stock exchange. Of course, today last the marked the last day of trading for 2023. Rise Exchange anchor Bosuno Mofaya, he spoke to Richard Mofe Damijo, a Nigerian actor and writer who rang the closing bell at the exchange, and Temi Popola, Chief, Exec Chief Executive Officer of the Nigerian Exchange Limited. Let's take a listen. Well, when you talk about your, your, the, the markets and, and the industry of entertainment markets, industry in Nigeria, uh, how did you, how did you, have you folks walked through the year when you talk, look at inflation, interest rates, and how you need to source money to fund your productions? Uh, we, somebody, I, I like to say it this way, it's like performing bypass surgery with forks and knives and, and the patient gets to leave, <laughs> you know. We, we are magicians, that's what we are. We, we defy every art, you know. We have a project to do, uh, we, will, we will do it. I mean, we will raise funds from our families, our friends. We will go to the ends of the world to find the funds. And that's how we have survived. And somehow we, in, in all of that struggle, in all of that inflation, we managed to do the biggest film out of Africa this year uh, with the Black Book. Interesting if there are still more, the governments over the last few years have spoken about the support for the entertainment industry, for the creative industry as, as a whole basket or portfolio. What more would you like to see in terms of concrete terms? Would you want to see interventions from certain DFI, maybe the Bank of Industry and a few others, to support the production of entertainment in Nigeria, which has gone global? We, we, we already have interventions. What, what, what I would ask for is institutionalizing those funds and not, not, not having them as interventions because interventions can only go that far. Uh, but when it is, the institutions are there and it is guaranteed and it is budgeted for every year, it is planned, it is sustained, then the industry can grow. Then you can plan, then you can upscale, you can do anything you want to do. But if you keep waiting for interventions, what happens when the interventions don't come in certain years, or when the interventions don't go around, or when, when, when applications for those monies, you know, and the criteria are nowhere spelled out? You know, uh, the black book, uh, uh, my daughter had to, you know, uh, go to her friends in the tech sector to raise money, you know, so sometimes the interventions are not enough, you know, so you need policy that puts it down in institutions and says, look, go to this institution and go to that one if you want to do anything. Thankfully, we now have a creative industry uh, ministry, you know, um, I've met the vice president twice, and that is a signal of how serious they want to, to, to do this. Uh, the ministry, his office, everybody's all hands are on deck right now. Uh, we want to see how they will engage in the new year and bring all of this to pass. It will really be exciting to see how far the engagements will go and, and how far uh, the, the budget was, was increased from 1.9 billion to 11 billion. That's a lot of money if we can engage well and, and, and put them into use. And then you got the, the NGX bringing you here for the final trading day of the year. And I'm sure when you look at Wall Street and you look at the entertainment industry, uh, Hollywood, I'm sure you look at uh, some of their big names listed on the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, is it at any point in time that those of you who are big names in this industry will be able to bring one of these production firms to list on the stock exchange here before you retire? In a manner of speaking, if actors ever retire, because the world is a stage and the stage never stops. Well, there's no sign of retirement soon, <laughs> uh, but that's the plan. The, the plan is to make sure that you know, we can have one of our companies quoted. Um, uh, I just joined Anaco Films as, as chairman and we want to push the envelope as fast as we can push it. And this is just like a precursor of the possibilities that we can, we can have when, when minds come together. I, I don't think that we should all be working as islands. You know, um, Moabud is already doing great work, um, and we we want to see how much more we can do, and, and and see how we can get how fast we can get listed. Uh, give me your outlook, and I'm, because I want to talk to Nicole for just a few seconds uh, on this on this live show, I just want to be sure that 2024 is beginning. What is it looking like for you? Tell me, what's that big box office that RMD Production is working on? What's the budget like? Give me an idea. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not at liberty to say, but but we our last budget was a million dollars, 
uh, our blockbuster next year. In fact, we're applying a series of blockbusters, so we, we're not going to be doing anything under, under a million in the new year. You're going more than a million dollars? Yes, yes. We, the, our last, our last uh, our film was a million dollars. And we are, it, it did so well, it has become the biggest film out of Africa on the, on the streaming platform, on any streaming platform. And so we are hoping that we'll be able to top that this year, next year. And congratulations. And Nicole, he just said look, that you supported the last production because you got to talk to folks in the tech industry. Uh, are you seeing this convergence from, from tech to entertainment? Get a little bit closer to that. Yes. <laughs> Um, so I think from for technology founders are actually creatives. We just do it in different ways, right? So it's whether it's not creating art, it's creating products, it's creating you know services that are actually moving humans forward. And so a lot of the people in the tech industry are seeing what the creative industry could do, um, and thought it was great. So at DT, you know, he's he plays both worlds between tech and being a creative. Um, so being able to pull a lot of founders together to believe in his vision, believe in the work that you know my dad could create on screen um, so it made sense um, and we see a lot and I think a lot more of our financial investors that put money into technology are viewing the creative industry as like a space to put additional capital um, and bringing those two worlds together um, I think is is really key in actually being able to tell our African stories which is the core of Anacol and the core of R&D productions. Very interesting my final point we've got to go has to go with copyright and this has been one major issue copyright piracy in, in, in Nigeria's uh, creative industry and the government is pushing a whole lot of that. What was the uh, talk around in the industry? You want further legislation? Where do you want the news to be to be tightened a whole lot more uh, and give Nigerian artists, creative industry, uh, creative folks uh, a good deal for their money, for their sense, for, for everything, innovation, everything they bring on the table? I, th I think legislation is, is already taking care of, of all of that and, and, and one of the good things about technology is that technology can actually reduce uh, piracy. Uh, it has never been a question of, of having the right legislation but, but that of you know, uh, uh, making sure that uh, you can, it's, it's, it's activated, those laws are activated and, and then there is consequence for, for that. Sometimes you you, you, you pursue these people, the pirates and all of that, and they go scot-free because the system is not you know, strong enough to keep, to keep them. But um, thank God for technology, which has uh, sort of uh, democratized the space and further reduced how much the pirates can actually operate. I think our interactions in the entertainment industry, I would say it's just a mirror of really how we see the exchange. We try really to find what are those institutions that have been a part of the past of Nigeria. They're still very relevant today in the present and we see them to be relevant in the future because that's really what we expect that the exchange is. Uh, and of course, people like Mr. Richard Mufed Damijo really signify that. We're hoping that as an exchange, uh, after 60 years uh, or more of history, uh, that as we're part of the Nigeria project today, we really see ourselves to be a big part of that uh, of that future. So yes, I think as we look also ahead to 2024 on the back of what thankfully has been a successful year, uh, we see a year ahead of listings, a year of capital market, you know, sort of activity to support the broader government efforts, you know, in Nigeria. Uh, and we see a year also of, you know, a lot more drive and depth to some of the significant things we're trying to do, particularly around digital transformation of our capital markets. 45% uh, and beating whatever it is within the local market. Uh, this year has been so big, but um, again, if you give me just about a minute on what else make the headlines for you, as far as an exchange, a gateway to Africa for the outgoing year and what that would mean in 2024 for the NGX being part of the wider African Securities Exchanges Association group. Thank you very much. I think to add some context, you know, I like to take a bit more bigger picture. As you know, the capital markets also are not so short term in nature. But if you go back the last four years, our uh, market has actually ended in the positive territory each of those years, including this year. So it's one that we are proud of. Uh, and you spoke about the fact that, of course, in local currency terms, these returns are very good. Uh, and I say to people, well, if you can find me a manager who returned over 50% or close to 50% in local currency terms, you know, there's not many of them. So we're quite pleased with performance this year. Uh, a few other things that we're happy about, uh, some of the listings that we have had this year. 
This year we had what was the first investment trust listing uh, on our exchange this year in the Nigerian infrastructure uh, debt fund that was listed on the equity segment. One that we're particularly excited about because when we speak about the market supporting government, supporting infrastructure, it's vehicles like that that we would use. We also had a listing in VFD Group also this year within the uh, investment holding uh, uh, sector. And when we step back over the last two, three years, you know, we had the MTN share sale, which also has contributed to the, a lot of the trading that we see this year, Gary Power. Also, when you look at the trading activity this year and the depth, you know, I think it was 70% year-on-year growth in the amount of trades. Uh, a lot of that was to a new listing like that. Boa Foods also, I can't fail to remember. So I think that what you're seeing happen this year is the culmination of efforts, of course, not just over the last three years, but of course over the foundation that has been laid you know, on the exchange way before now. And I think that paints a good picture for us going out into next year.